don't think I do a whole lot, but I really do. Uh, and I'm not going to start naming names, but I want to say thank you to all those who are behind scenes people because, again, what you see up here is only a small slip of that. Uh, so thank you to the guys who do the sound, the uh, building the grounds, the people who mow. I don't really can talk to you about you all a whole lot and brag on you, but I want you to know we do notice a lot of what you do. Um, and I, I'm so very thankful for it now. This morning, though, uh, I do want to take, us, take just a moment before we get started, before we get into our book of James. I want you to know a uh, number of things we need to be praying for. Uh, and one of them is uh, Stephen Cindy. We're going to continue to pray for them uh, this morning. And so what I'm going to do right now is just take a special time to pray, pray for them. Also, uh, we need to pray for uh, uh, Mark Gates' uh, scheduled surgery. Some point in time soon uh, on his hands, uh, all related back to diabetes. So, again, uh, be aware for him, too, in all of this. Uh, please make sure that you stay in, in, in touch with uh, us as uh, we do the one call, as we do the different things. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to be uh, just praying and being a praying people. So, let's, let's at this point in time, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. For this day, we thank you for an opportunity to come to you and to pray. Lord, we pray because you asked us to, you tell us to, but Lord, we pray because our hearts are hurting for those who are sick around us. Lord, we pray for sin, and we pray for sin, and we pray for the recovery. We pray, continue to pray for healing for both of them. Continue to pray for knowledge, Lord, of uh, those who are helping and uh, those who are doctors that are around them, uh, so they might be able to, to correct some of the things that are happening. Lord, we pray for, continue to pray for the families as well. As this is a, as a difficult time, a lengthy time, uh, God, we pray that you continue to bless them as well. God, also, we pray for those who are sick in our church. We pray for those uh, like, like Mark, who uh, has his upcoming surgery scheduled. We pray for those uh, who are just fighting off uh, the flu bugs and stomach bugs and all those types of things. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for, we pray for a special blessing for them today. Lord, also, we pray for those in our church family and we pray for those of, the, of our extended church family that, that are lost, Lord. Lord, if they do not know you, we pray that they would be the day of salvation. We pray that someone would be able to plant the seed, someone might be able to water, but Lord, we also pray for the harvest. We pray that that harvest would be the day. Lord, we say thank you for all of this, and we ask all these things in your son's name we do pray. Amen. If, you, uh, if, you're, if you've not been joining us, uh, I want to go ahead and let you know that we, we are in the book of James, obviously. It seems like uh, we're, we're there for a little bit. I'm going to move my microphone just for a second because I'm, I'm losing it whenever I go back on my head. So, I'm going to move my microphone just, just a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's bad. That's, that's a lot bad. I don't turn my body every time I, I want to turn my head. I want to go ahead and let you know, if you're, if you're joining us for the first time in the book of James, I want you to know we, we are sort of steadily walking through the book of James, and it's one of those things that the more that I study this, and the more that I uh, sort of wrap my arms around the book of James, the more that I continually find myself going, wow, there's so much more here. It's so, it's so rich, and it's so deep. Uh, the reason that I continually like the book of James is that is there's this constant challenge for each and every one of us, that it's not just about what we say, and actually, it's the exact opposite. It's not, it has almost nothing to do with what you say. It has everything to do with what you do. Now, I want to review a little bit from last week because chapter 4. Okay, now, I want you to know, I'm not in, I was not in charge. God not put me in charge of being the person who got to write the names and numbers and which chapter breaks happened where, okay? I wasn't that, I'm not that guy. And I want you to know, if you study your church history, whenever that happened, nobody questioned it, which is kind of odd. Um, because so there's breaks in places where there probably shouldn't be breaks. This is one. Chapter 4 breaks at a really odd spot. And what you actually need is you need chapter 3 to go along with it. If you don't have chapter 3, chapter 4 doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's review really quickly. Now, last time we were together, other people can only see where you are. They cannot see your beginning or your ending. We always talk about this a lot. Hey, where are you from? What are the things that you, you know, try to learn about people? The only time that we can actually see each other is where you are. James is saying this because with the expectation of, I know, 
Future, there's only two locations in, 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 in future. It's either in heaven with Jesus or it's in hell. James, so James, like, I really don't care about where you're going. No, at the point where you're going, where are you at right now, Christian? And what are you doing right now? Because that's the only thing that we can really see. Not only that, but last week we were together, we really got on this whole idea of being truly wise, or being biblical or godly wise versus worldly wise, okay? Now, and I want you to know, even if I went back and I listened to, uh, I'm going to go back and try to listen to sermons. That one sort of ends abruptly. Why is that? Well, because you need verse 18 to jump into the next 10 verses of chapter 4 and then kind of put them all together. So if you're one of these people who love to write your Bible, and I want you to know I encourage that. If you, if you, because this is a book to be studied, okay? Um, I always tell people, if you want a book to, to be, no, a, a Bible should be falling apart, all right? Well, because a Bible that's falling apart is usually a life that's not. I just want you to know that. Um, and I still, I still love from someone else. But your Bible should be something that you use. It should be a utility. And I want you to know, if you look at mine, it's been blood. It looks like it looks like it's seen better days. I just want you to know that. But I don't go and spend a whole lot of money on it. Why? I don't plan on using it. If your Bible still looks pristine, hmm, stop and think about that for a little bit. Why is that? Because it's not being used. But this is what James is saying to you. James here is wanting you to take the time and to look at this. So what, what you really could do is you actually could take chapter 3, and you really want to, right around about verse 13, and you could actually draw from there to about verse number 10. That really all belongs together, okay? And that's how, how we're going to study it today. So if you were not here last week or you missed last week, I <coughs> encourage you to go to Facebook or go to YouTube or on both of those channels. Go back and listen to last week's lesson. Because that's how we're going to take it forward. We're going to talk really about the idea of being biblical wise, being godly wise, and, and versus being worldly wise. So verse 18 is what we're going to jump in at. So do, go ahead and read that with you. Chapter 3, verse number 18. And, and a harvest of righteousness is, is sown in peace by those who make peace. Now what's interesting about this? Is this really is the chapter, and this is the connected verse where I told you that. This is what I want to tell you. At the end of chapter 3, we learn what true wisdom is. It's, it truly is peace loving. Now, I already have it on here, so I'm going to be at the end of it. You're going to hear me repeat it multiple times. Peace at all costs, only to what? Truth. I'll, I'll, I love being peace. I see peace. But what? What, what will I not see peace whenever, whenever it's up against? Truth. Truth is what's in our cause, right? It's not peace. If you and I disagree, and it's something we can disagree on, okay, we'll try to make peace. But whenever you come at me and you're saying, no, 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 it's really an issue of truth, okay, it's going to be an issue of truth, we're going to argue. And we're going to, we're going to dive into it. But let's talk about peace. The process of peace is a, a peacemaker is planting in peace and harvesting righteousness. So this is the question I want to give to you, church, and as a church member. Can, can the process be done in a world of arguments and bickering? Can you harvest peace? Can you harvest righteousness if all you're doing is bickering and arguing? And the answer to that is no. Okay. Yeah, someone answered me? Thank you. Um, that was not a rhetorical question. I want you to know that. That was not one of those questions you should answer me inside of your head. So they answer out loud, the answer is no. Can this process be done in arguments and bigger? Pastor Mark, why are you so wound up about this? What is your result? Let me just add, well, let's just stop right here. This is not your all to call moment, but it really could have been. I want you to know, I, I, as I was planning this and as I was scheduling this, I got to verse 18 and really wanted to stop and think, and once you know, I could have had verse 18 as its own sermon right now. But what's your, but what's your, what's your result? And let me ask this in a very open, just be honest with yourself. What is my result? Where am I at right now? Am I harvesting righteousness? Am I harvesting godly wisdom? Am I harvesting peace? Or, well, I feel like I'm always in an argument. I feel like I'm always bickering with someone. 
If they, if they would just agree with me, we would all get along a lot easier. You ever felt that? Feel like that's the world I'm living right now. All the, if you just agree with me, we'll have peace. Mm. What is your result? And I want you to know, and that's a, that's a personal question right now, and if, if God's already dealing with your heart, again, you can do me out and start praying right now. Because that's important. What are you harvesting? You're going, well, Pastor Mark, I really, I really don't want to know. I really don't know what I'm harvesting. Well, then take a moment and think about it. Think about all of your relationships. Think about, think about the, from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed, from Monday through Sunday, all the whole week. What is your relationships? What is the what is the grand result of those relationships? And what what are you harvesting? Is it peace? Is it truth? Is it righteousness? Or is it just bickering and, and arguments and, and things like that? Now, verse eighteen catapults us into chapter four. If um, and I, again, I have on your peace, uh, but not the cost of truth. Because this is a warning of worldliness. Now, I want you to know, uh, if you are here today or if you're watching on Facebook and you are not saved, I, I want you to know that I love my heart. The sermon's not for you. I'll get to you in a minute. Okay? Um, James here, specifically chapter 4, at the very beginning of this, is writing to Christians. And that's how we're going to take this on. Uh, you see, you also see pastors, they try to they try to squeeze unbelievers into, into specific spaces where there's believers to quit at, okay? James here is talking specifically to believers. He's talking specifically to those who are going to, who are talking to each other. So there's a warning of worldliness. Christian, there's a warning of worldliness that we can find ourselves in. How do I know that we found ourselves in that? I'm glad you asked. Let's start reading. Verse number one. We're going to actually read the first three verses of chapter four. What causes quarrels uh, and what causes fights among you? I love that first question, right? What, why, are you, uh, why are you quarreling? Why are you arguing? And I want you to know, I grew up thinking that quarreling was just a word that my mom made up. I didn't think that that actually was in the Bible until very, until, you know, later. Quarreling, why, why do you cause what causes fights among you? Is it not that your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, so you murder, you covet, you cannot obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Now, I want you to know if there's a likelihood of you hearing a, a sermon from somewhere in, chapter, in the book of James outside of chapter 1, it's probably at the beginning of chapter 4. There's probably a sermon that you've heard somewhere in your life about, hey, you don't have because you do not ask, and you don't ask because you ask wrongly. About your prayer life. I guarantee you've heard this one. What? I've heard at least 15 of them. Okay? But I want you to know that if you're reading in this section of Scripture, if you're reading and you're studying, if you're studying it like a good uh, biblical scholar, I want you to know that's not what all talks about. And if all things you walk away with is, oh, I'm just not asking God for it. Huh, okay, well, let's, let's walk down this little road for you just for a moment. Well, then I just, you know what? If I, every time I'm in trouble, God, I just wish you would just take this from me. Is that you, you you pray that, right? God, just take this from me. What did, what did James chapter 1 verse 2 say? Count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds. All I'm asking is, God, don't, don't teach me a lesson. Don't take me through the things I need to do. Just, just go ahead and zap me with knowledge, okay? That's really what I want. And God, if you could go ahead and zap my bank account so that I don't have to worry about anything anymore, that'd be great too. Now, I want you to know, loving as lovingly as we can, you've been very quickly Google search people that will preach that too. Hey, you should not pray hard enough. If you'll pray hard enough, God will bless you more. You're, if you'll just give a little bit more, you'll have more in your bank account. I can guarantee you, you've heard that. If you haven't, all you have to do is turn on some random... Tell James, listen, I can about guarantee you that someone's going to come up at some point in time. Whether the globe's getting behind it or not. Okay? <laughs> but, what is wrong? Christians, this is between believers. Verses 1, 2, and 3 are actually between believers. Believers, what are you doing with each other? 
And I want you to know, this is where, I'm, in my mind, and where I get James being a very angry preacher, I really want you to look, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, what he's really saying is he's looking at two Christians and they're arguing and they're fighting, and he's really looking at them, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Why? Why are you doing this? So what's wrong? You need desire within this is constantly struggling to be satisfied. I want you to know this. That you don't believe me? Okay. Um, we're in that season of life whenever uh, the, the trees are beginning to change. I guarantee you will find yourself on some two-lane road with a person whose plate is not from here. Or if it's from here, they're not originally from here. And uh, they're going to go about 10 miles an hour. Why? Because they want to look at all the pretty leaves. They want to look at all the dead things in the air. Right? That's what a leaf is, right? When it dies and changes color. So we're going to do. We'll look at all three dead things. Um, just please don't be the person that was on I-40 a couple, a couple months ago that was trying to take photos while we're driving through New Orange at a high rate of speed. Don't be that person. Because whenever, whenever you get behind that, what's your, what's your reason to think? Uh, look at, come on, just be transparent. What, what would you say? Look at this wonderful child of God, right? Is that what you're going to say? Now, what are you going to say? Idiot. Idiot. Why don't this person go back further from? Right? You, and I want you to know, you may not be looking at a burger, but you're going, look, well, you know, God, there's, there's 18 billion people on this earth. This one doesn't need to be. At least not in my life. And that's exactly what James is saying. Now, we laugh at but James here is taking me to the point where this is really his life. You desire, you fight, you quarrel. Hey, you, you're not believing the way I do. You're not, you didn't do that the way I wanted you to do that. Of course, I didn't tell you either. Or explain to you, or try to help. That's exactly what James was trying to do. What's wrong? What is wrong? I want you to know, it was all within me, not the right title on this, on this one. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> and I couldn't write that. Why? Because I'm struggling with the exact same thing. I struggle. Just please get out of my way. I'm in a hurry. Why, why can they not just do it the way I wanted to do it? Well, have you ever tried explaining to them? No, not really. It says you covet and you cannot obtain. We want more of something that's not ours and probably should be. Well, did you see the way that they were dressed? Did you see the new car that they bought? Man, I wish I had a new car. Uh, what? A couple of, uh, a couple of months ago, maybe even a couple of years ago, you know, the, the whole Twitter hashtag first world problems? Yeah. That's what it feels like, right? Start complaining. Complain about something that you don't have. And do that in the context of then thinking about people who don't have any of it. Wow. That's Mark and Green that really dead down there, okay? No? James here just hit, just hit me we're, we're right where I live, okay? I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to hide behind this. Because this is exactly where I am. Why can't they go faster? Why can't they do this? Why can't they? Didn't they? No, I was going that problem. I don't think I was going this morning. There's only one over this morning. I'm fighting the world. Because you want something that's not yours, and it probably should be. Can I give that to you as well? Hey, I want that. God, I, you know, I really like a new car. God has seen you wreck the last four cars you had. <laughs> probably not going to give you a new one. Hey, God, I, 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 want, I, wish, I, had, I wish I had more money. I see what you're doing with your money now. So it probably shouldn't be. The famous verse here is you do not, you do not, why do we do not ask? What's wrong? We do not ask. We do not pray. Now I want you to know again, this is where you have a number of people, this is where they land and they drop right in the middle of this verse and they preach this verse and you, you walk out feeling really stupid. No. Hey! Woo! Good church. We do not pray, we do not ask. Can I tell you what the prayer and what the asking does? Changes your viewpoint. On what? 
Why are you quarreling? Why are you asking for stuff that you don't, don't need? What are you truly praying? Whenever I pray, what's amazing, and it's going to talk about it a little bit later, is that I come close to God. When I come close to God, I want the things that God wants. Whenever I start doing that, it's amazing how much my view won't change on what I want in this life. Do I want the things of God? Or do I want to sit there and argue with my, my neighbor? Do I want to sit there and argue and, and bicker and just, you're not doing it my way? Whenever I pray, it changes my mindset. It changes my thinking to what is what God is wanting. And at the end of verse 3, can I tell you, if you, if you, if you're, again, if you write in your Bible, can I tell you what I wrote in mine? The, the, the part of verse 3 that we don't like? God will tell you no. Oh, that one hurts, right? Well, think about this. Why did he say no? When you ask him, you do not receive because you ask wrongly and spend it in your own passions. Did you ask for the things of God? No, no, I just really wanted, I really wanted my suffering to end. I really wanted just that to stop for me. Did you forget why God may have given it to you? Did you forget why God may have given it to you? You might be struggling so that God can teach you a lesson. And you're going to say, God, will you take the struggling from me? And he's going to look at you and say, no. We want to treat God like he's an imagined genie that all we have to do is pray and he'll bring us a kiss. Whenever we spend time in prayer, and if we spend time in deep prayer and long prayer, and praying what God's Word says in the Bible, I want you to know your viewpoint will change. Your wants will change. Your heart will change. What will it change to? Pastor Mark will change the things of God. His ways are not my ways. So what do I need to do? I need to pray and I need to learn so I can figure His ways. His, his wants are not my wants, obviously, because what do I want to do? I still want to argue and fight and figure it out and do it all on my own. And that's not what God has called us to do. So how do we see others? I got that still because I got I got three or four graphs to go through as well. So how do we see others? Now I want you to know what what the way that I, I always talk about this is that if I was a believer and an unbeliever. The communication between I, I want you to know I had, a word, I had the word testimony written in this and you couldn't see it, so I took it out. Okay. Every time you are talking to an unbeliever, whether you are happy, sad, whatever emotion you happen to be feeling at the moment, whether you are right or whether you are wrong, every time you speak to an unbeliever, what are you giving them? You're giving them your testimony. I know what you're saying, right? I want to give them a piece of my mind. I got you. But you need to be giving them your testimony. Why? Why, why? why do I put that in there right now? Because they are an unbeliever. The most important thing, regardless of the conversation, is that they need what? They need Jesus. They need the gospel. We disagree on a bunch of different things. I will, have, I will, I will seek peace, but only if it does not, what? Interfere. The truth. James here is saying, oh, let's, let's talk about this though. This is, this is James chapter 4, right here. This what? What's in between? Two believers. Did we, did we sometimes forget that we are called to be iron and sharpening iron? We're called to be encouraging. Encouraging each other for our Thessalonians. Encouraging each other as you see the day approaching. We are called to be building one another up. We are called to be calling each other into, into accord with what God's Word says. It doesn't mean all the time we're happy. We're all happy all the time. We, we actually are most of the most miserable. Why? God's Word calls us to do what? To do life and do it real life. Not, not just, hey, how are you doing? You see, I've never seen the commercials. I forget what the commercials are. Uh, where they take the photo and it's a little paper sign and it's they're holding it up and like shows a smiley face. I've seen the commercial a couple of times. What James is calling us to is that here as, as Christians, what we do is we're constantly putting up the face, this facade, saying, "No, I'm okay. I'm struggling. 
with, I'm struggling with truth. I'm struggling with the way I should be hand, handling things. I'm struggling with my prayer life. I'm struggling with all of those things, Pastor Mark. But I'm not going to tell you at all because I want you to understand I'm a, I'm a good Christian. What, where do you find that? Please tell me. I mean, I mean this with all the love of my heart. I don't mean this sarcastically. Please tell me where you find that God's work. Where? God's work constantly calls us to do what? To draw close to Him. To, to, do you not know that, that the, how we should interact with these things? We are Christians. We should be setting the example for a non believing world. And that's exactly what James is coming at. So, chapter. Let's go down to verse number four. I really can. I got a little fog there. It's just getting me away. Verse number four. Now, I want you to know James here calls them adulterous people. You have friendship with the world and enemy with him. Uh, in, enmity with God, or enemy with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I want you to know that you can only pick one. Okay? Christian, I want you to know too many Christians have tried to pick both. Oh, you know what, Pastor Mark? I'll, I'll, I'll pick the Bible and I'll pick the church things on, on Sunday morning between the hours of 10 and noon. Once every month. That's as much as I can do. James here is saying, look, you only get to pick one. And if you don't pick God, or pick God completely, you are picking the world. Listen to what he says here really quickly. You have, uh, that therefore, in the verse 4, therefore whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. But I thought God was supposed to be love. Yeah, he was. He was love and he's just and he's holy. And he actually says in his word, there are things that he hates. I like, the, I, I like using that word. That word grades on me, doesn't it? It makes you feel bad. Oh, God hates something? Ooh. I mean, can't can imagine being warm and fuzzy and, you know, like a happy daddy God. No, God's to be holy. Or do you suppose that in no purpose, verse number 5, Scripture says, He earns jealousy over the Spirit that He's made to dwell in us? Why in the world would He quote Proverbs all the way in the book of James? Well, it's because of this. He says, I want you to only pick one. Now, which one do you think James wants you to pick? James wants you to pick God. Now, I want you to know, I couldn't figure out an answer for God except for his Bible. I, you know, there's the burning bush and a whole bunch of other images. How do you know about God? How do you know about the things that He wants to do? It's by studying this book. Spending time in this book, reading this book, studying this book, doing it different ways. Um, already, I'm already prepping for some things happening in spring, spring for us. And it's interesting. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've read the book of Exodus. You realize that? Moses was 80 when they restarted going back. 80. I missed that the first however many times I've read the book of Exodus. Well, wow. He was married right again. How does that play into it? Well, we're going to study that this spring. But we've got to continue to study. So this is what verse what God continues to say is, look, I'm going to continue to give you grace. I'm going to continue to give you so you can understand and you can fight. Now, I want you to know, let me go back just quick. I, I'm sorry, push the button. Push the Bible still being up there. You're going, Pastor Mark, you don't understand what I'm going through. I know that, but God does. So God, in verse number 6, what does he continually give you? More grace. So God, God will not forgive me because he he's seen all the things I've done. No, that's exactly. He sees everything that you've done. He saw through all the time. And that's exactly the reason why he sent his son to die for me. So for you that, were not, that have not been a Christian, this is where I plug you back in. Okay? You might have said, I don't want you to know I've heard all of it. Hey, as soon as I get my life correct, I'm going to give it to God. As soon as I get my life things going right for me, I'm going to give that to God. Guess what? Guess what? God, is a, God just wants you. Okay? He wants you to give all that you have, which is nothing but your sin. What else do you have to give God? I'm going to give my life. You're not in charge of it. I'm going to give him the rest of my days. Uh, yeah, not in charge of it. 
What are you in charge of? Got all the only thing I got is, is a life of sin. That's it. You gotta believe in what you did, and I confess you received it. What does God's word say? My grace is sufficient for you. This is my I have an opportunity. When I confess Christ the Savior, that what happens? Since you will be saved. If you are in this place, you're struggling, you're going, but Pastor Mark, I'm, I'm struggling with the world. Well, then let me talk about your salvation. If you really do believe that you're saved, then you really do have grace upon grace. Every day is His grace is new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Why is that? Because God is a God of love. He's a God that's going to help. And he's not just abandoning us. He's not just going to say, oh, we're saved now. Go, 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 go to new life. God is with us inch and every day. Last one I'll leave you. Verses 7 through, 7 through 10. There's six items that James tells us when we're talking about repenting, when we're talking about moving away from the world and moving towards God. So this might be where you are today. I want you to discuss with the unbelieving and discuss with the believer. Now, listen to me both. If you're an unbeliever here today, uh, it, it simply does go to, it simply does. You admit that you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus Christ came, he died on the cross, and he died for your sins. Confess it in your mouth. Well, if you are, it's not. Okay, that's salvation. But if you as a Christian simply find yourself this morning, I want you to know, this, again, before I ever get to you, my son's beat me up at least two or three times. <coughs> Where are you struggling at, Christian? Where are you struggling at with what you're doing? James tells us six things to do. I want you to look at this real quick. It says submit to God. You're subject to God. Ready to listen and obey. You don't take this lightly. If God's word simply tells us it's wrong, if it's wrong, I don't really care what you think. God's word says it's wrong, it's wrong. <coughs> am I willing to listen to that? Am I willing to obey that? Or am I going, you know what? I'm willing to fudge on this a little bit. I'm willing to soften that a little bit. I'd rather have more people like me. We, I think we talked about this on Wednesday night. What did, what did, what, what was, what did, what did Jesus tell the disciples? The world hates you. Just remember, hey, you first. That is my subject to God. Continue down to verse number seven. It says, resist the devil. Quit listening to what the world and the temptation says. Hey, you're Pastor Mark, I'm being tempted. I, I want you to know, I, I continually fight this idea of, of temptation being outside of us. I continually fight it and struggle with the idea that's probably a little bit more of I'm holding the temptation and listening to it at the same time. So what do I need to do? Stop listening. If you know, let's be honest. If you know that it's your weakness, stop. Stop. Well, that's smart. I don't, I don't know how to stop. That's a better question than saying I can't stop. How do you start? Well, then start. Draw near to God. Verse number eight. Talk about your prayer life. I, uh, there's not too many verses in the Bible I, I, do not, I cannot stand. One of them is found in 1 Thessalonians. And it says, pray without ceasing. I can't stand that verse. Why? Because I can't achieve, I can't achieve it. Struggle. I've not had personality. But I really do talk about how's your prayer life? When are you praying? How are you praying? Not just praying at, at meals for those that are for what's in front of us, but, but spending time in prayer. And I want you to know, I, I, I often talk about, hey, look, if you pray five minutes a day and you've not been praying in three weeks, that's a great improvement. I'm still there. I want to go to the other end. For Christians, for you that, that pray often, when was the last time you got down in, in some deep prayer? I, I'm, not, I'm not talking. I'm not talking three minutes, five minutes. I'm talking. I'm talking the thirty minutes to an hour. Just prayer. 
as many times as God. Let's confess in sin. If you end up in the end of verse 8, it says, Cleanse your hands, your sinners, and purify your hearts, your battle mind. A couple things there. Hands actually mean action. What does those do? Is that clean and is that the turn of God? Heart is talking about motives. Are my motives clean? Are my motives pure? Double minded. And sometimes when we just need to confess, you know what? I, I had this intention. I was trying to get this other thing squeezed in to get this done. Number five, mourn, weep, and learn. Can I tell you something that's really hard? Whenever we ask for forgiveness of our sins, what do we what do? We, do? We, we sometimes, I feel like we ask it like a three-year-old, right? God, forgive us of our sins. And when we're really transparent about that, our, our answer is, God, forgive us of our sins, and please don't spank me for it. Right? Don't, 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 don't let me get trouble for it. When was the last time you prayed and prayed for your sins? I'm not, I'm not talking about, I, I can't make this, I can't be an example, so I can only pray for my sins. When did you ever pray for your sins and you just wept over them? Let my sins have been forgiven, that's right. You ever sit there and wonder why? God, you forgave me these, and I don't deserve that. You're right. I don't deserve it. But God looked and he chose to send a son. When was the last time you sat and just prayed and you cried over your prayer over your sins? Truly mourn and weep over them. You know, so many times, church, I feel like all we're doing is living again a little toddler with God. I, I, I've, I've sinned. Please forgive me. Don't spank me. Don't teach me a lesson. Just, just forgive me. Love on me. Whenever we need to come to God truly mourning, knowing, oh God, I, I, I need to weep over my own sin. I need to weep over my own, <clears throat> on my own failures. Last but not least, on this number six, is being humble. Humble ourselves, and God will lift us up. Only at the end of that, I want you to know: Will God lift you up? And the answer is absolutely yes. And you notice that He didn't put that at the beginning. Why? Why did He not put it at the beginning? Well, when was the last time that you submitted yourself therefore to God? When was the last time that you resisted the devil? When was the last time that you drew near to God? When was the last time that your actions, your thoughts, your minds were all clean? When was the last time that you mourned and you wept over your own sin? Then, then, what? Then, God lifts us up because we have now humbled ourselves. I don't know about you, but humbling is um, not something that, that 2021 America has thought me to be really good at. Right? I, I grew up in a generation, I literally grew up in a generation that had shirts that said, because we can. Why do you do that? Because we can. Whether that was right, wrong, or indifferent. God's saying, I want you to pray. I want you to submit yourself. So this is where I want you to be at church this morning. And I want you to have a spirit song this morning. Um, we'll ask the guys to pray a little bit of music again this morning. Do I plant peace to harvest righteousness? Let's go back to the very beginning of this lesson. What is it that you're harvesting? What you reap, you will sow. You have to sow at some point in time. What are you harvesting? I don't know, but you take the time to think about it. The reason that most of us don't want to stop to take the time to stop thinking about it is because we don't like results. New results get driven, okay? When was the last time that you harvested anything that was righteous?
How do I talk to believers and unbelievers? What's coming out of your mouth? Who do you talk to? Do you talk to, do you talk to unbelievers about the love of Christ? Well, I just try to avoid, I try to avoid, I want, I want peace. I, I get that, but you're sacrificing truth. How do I talk to believers? Am I, am I in a place where I'm, I'm lifting each other up? Am I just bickering and quarreling, fighting and arguing all the time? Last but not least, let us use God or let us use this world. Answers I cannot give. These are all have to be personally driven, and I want you to know, Pat, church and family, this. Maybe you have to find yourself like, like I do. There's times you read God's word and you just go, you know what? I got to sit down and let that pray. Whether that's here right now or whether that's later in the day, I, I, I pray that that does affect you. I pray that you get to a spot in time whenever the, all you can do is get in a quiet spot and pray. I'm going to ask you to please stand. I'm going to take just a moment. I ask you to bow your head, close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to pray a little bit. <coughs> Lord, I pray at this point in time, I pray for those who do not know you as Savior. God, whether they have a thought or, or the idea that they, must, they need to get something right in their, their life before they come to you. <coughs> You're going to miss the power of verse 6. God, your grace, and you give grace, and you give a love that gives more and more grace. Lord, I pray for the person that uh, does not know you as Savior today, I pray that today would be the day of salvation. May they admit that they're belief, admit that they're a sinner, and they believe in you, and may they confess you. And if they do that today, I pray, Lord, that they would come and and let one of us know that. But Lord, I also pray for the, for the believers that are here. Do, do, let's take a moment and say, do we, do we plant peace? Do we harvest peace? Do we harvest righteousness? Or are we harvesting things in the world? Be, let's be careful how we talk to others, how we, how we testify, and how we share. And Lord, may, may we spend time today, may we spend time this week, in deep prayer, in praying to you and drawing closer to you. For we ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.